Today's story will awaken your soul. Please watch the story till the end, dear friends. You will learn a lot by listening to today's story. In the meantime, an incident happened in India in which two boys planted a camera in the grave of a Muslim brother. And that incident today we will tell you, friends. This incident happened in Kerala, India, where two boys installed a CCTV camera in a grave in a Muslim grave site to make fun of Muslims and to know what happens in the graves. Then what they saw there and what those boys recorded inside that grave, all these things we will tell you today in this video. But friends, before we start the video, let's pray a little. O oh Allah, bless us all with wealth. Make me owner, get rid of disease and grant Taufiq to pray five times namaz. All write in comment. Amin, I request you are Hindu or Muslim. Please watch the video till the end and all give a like to this video, friends. First of all, we are a woman. To tell the story of the grave, a man who worked in a cemetery, said in an interview, once a woman died, and to bury the woman's body, the women's relatives came to me in the cemetery and told me, said that after making a grave, I also started to make a grave for that woman. But whenever I made a grave for that woman, the grave would be closed. Even after digging the grave again and again, the grave would be closed, or some other. There were problems like the first time I dug the grave for the woman, the grave seemed to collapse on its own. Then the second time, the water came out of the grave. So, after digging the grave a few times, some all sorts of problems arose. Then when I told this to the woman's family, I came to know that the woman was not behaving well with her husband. The woman was verbally quarreling with her husband. The woman was always scolding and insulting her husband. A scholar was then called there and asked what could be done to make the corpse can be buried. Then the scholar suggested that the woman's husband should be brought into the cemetery and asked him to pray for the forgiveness of his wife and ask him to forgive the wife for that. Then the woman should bring her husband into the cemetery. And everyone agreed. Then Allah, the Most High, raised his hands in the court of Rabul Alamin and began to cry, asking for forgiveness for his wife. And he himself forgave his wife and said in prayer, Allah, I have forgiven my wife. You also forgive her. Do it. That woman was easily made into the grave when the husband made dua. And then that woman was buried there. Friends. Now we tell you that CCTV incident happened in Kerala, India. And there are two non-Muslim boys to laugh at the Muslims and to know what goes on inside the grave put a CCTV camera in the grave of a dead person. We all know that the punishment of the grave is terrible. We must believe that this is true because our beloved Prophet Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is about the torment of the grave said, if you, as a bull kabar, mean about the punishment of the grave to know then to leave the burial of the deceased. If my, if there was no fear, I would tell you about the punishment of the grave I used to listen and show. You are a refuge from the punishment of the grave prey. The Holy Prophet, PBH, said this three times in a row. So we Muslims must believe it, but of India. The two Christian youths did not believe in the torment of the grave, so they wanted to mystify the torment of the grave. And they are grave, a CCTV camera was secretly installed inside. They wanted to see what is the real torment in the graves of Muslims. What is really in the grave? Angels come. They're in the grave to do these tests. CCTV cameras were installed. It is always like this in human life. Some things happen that make our eyes roll up our foreheads when we see or hear them. One such incident happened in Kerala, India. Some Christians plot they are with secrets in a grave to demystify Islam. CCTV cameras were installed. They wanted to see Muslims do angels come to the grave. Is there torment inside the grave? They did the work very closely and tactfully behind the scenes. Now. The question may arise in your mind that they have CCTV cameras in their graves. Did anyone see it? I also have this question in my mind. I woke up and found that the grave had already been dug and all the responsibility was the grave authority. These are the families of the deceased did not take responsibility. An hour after the burial, the two Christian youth CCTV turn on the camera and turn on the computer monitor and with on. Then the computer monitor exploded and both are serious, he fell down injured. And they are admitted to the hospital when they are sick is done. Many efforts are made to save them. But them, even big doctors could not save. Allahu Akbar. Dear viewers, we all have to go to that grave. We are, everyone is always with Allah Ta'ala. From the terrible punishment of that grave, I will ask for forgiveness. I will repent. God bless us all. Protect yourself from the punishment of a grave grave. 
and us, may you always be blessed with good deeds, Amin. Have you ever wondered why sometimes your dua or zikr is not answered? This question has likely crossed the mind of every Muslim at some point. Dua and zikr hold a significant place in Islam. They are not just rituals but powerful tools of communication between us and Allah. With every whisper of dua and every utterance of zikr we forge a deeper, more intimate connection with our Creator. These acts of worship have the potential to bring about profound changes in our lives, to provide comfort in times of distress and to guide us on the path of righteousness. Yet, there are moments when, despite our earnest pleas and tireless recitations, our prayers seemingly go unheard. It's as if an invisible barrier stands between us and the divine response we seek. But did you know that Allah might be blocking your dua and zikr if you're not doing two specific things? The first condition that must be met for your dua and zikr to be accepted is sincerity. Sincerity, or ikhlas in Arabic, is a fundamental principle in Islam. It is the pure, selfless intention to seek the pleasure of Allah without any ulterior motives or worldly distractions. It's not about how loudly we pray or how many times we do zikr. It's about the intention behind those actions. It's about the purity of our hearts and the honesty of our actions. In the Quran, Allah says, they were only commanded to worship Allah, being sincere to Him in religion, inclining to truth. This verse emphasizes the importance of sincerity in our worship. When we make dua or do zikr, it should not be to show off or to gain recognition from people. It should be purely for the love of Allah, with the hope of His acceptance and mercy. Sincerity, my dear friends, is the key that unlocks the doors of acceptance. It's the secret ingredient that gives our prayers and actions value in the sight of Allah. It is sincerity that transforms ordinary actions into acts of worship, that turns simple words into heartfelt prayers. So let's strive to purify our intentions, to ensure that our dua and zikr are not just mere utterances, but sincere expressions of our love and devotion to Allah. Because without sincerity, even the most fervent dua and zikr can go unheard. The second condition for an accepted dua and zikr is following the Prophet Sunnah. What does this mean exactly? The Sunnah refers to the teachings, actions and examples set forth by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. These are not just guidelines, but a way of life that we should strive to embody. It's about more than just prayers and rituals. It's about kindness, humility and striving for justice, among other virtues. Following the Prophet's Sunnah can significantly amplify our prayers and increase the likelihood of them being answered. It's like turning up the volume on a speaker. The more closely we follow the sunnah, the clearer and louder our duas and zikrs become, making them more likely to be heard and accepted. But how can we follow the Prophet's sunnah? It begins with learning. There are countless resources available, from books to lectures, that can help us understand and implement the sunnah in our daily lives. It's about making conscious decisions that align with the Prophet's teachings, from the way we interact with others to the way we spend our time. At the same time, it's important to remember that following the Sunnah is not about perfection. It's a journey, a constant striving to align our actions and intentions with those of the Prophet. It's about growth, learning and striving to be better each day. Remember, without following the Prophet's Sunnah, even the most sincere Dua and Zikr can be blocked. So, to have your Dua and Zikr accepted, you need both sincerity and adherence to the Prophet's Sunnah. Indeed, these two conditions are not mere suggestions, but actual requirements. They are the keys that unlock the door to our prayers being accepted. Let's delve a little deeper into this. Think about it this way. Sincerity is the pure, unfiltered connection between you and Allah. It's the honesty in your heart when you raise your hands in prayer. On the other hand, adhering to the Prophet's Sunnah is like the roadmap, guiding us on how to live our lives in the way that Allah has prescribed. When we combine these two, we create a powerful synergy that enhances our spiritual growth and strengthens our relationship with Allah. It's like a two-winged bird. Without one, the other is incomplete. In conclusion, sincerity and following the Prophet's Sunnah are inseparable conditions for our dua and zikr to be accepted. May Allah guide us all to fulfill these conditions so our duas and zikrs are always accepted. Be sure to give a like to the video and to get more Islamic videos regularly, subscribe to our Islamic channel and press the bell icon next to it.